what I do is just break it down into figuring out exactly how you want to create this atmosphere and community for people through the music that you like. So it's really about, okay, let's try this way and this way. But more than anything, the fundamental of blending and counting is what I truly focus on. You are now listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. The show is designed to help you grow your mobile app audience and get advice from experts in your industry. Now, here's your host. Sean Garvey. Good day, everyone. Welcome to another amazing edition of the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, the architect, Sean Garvey. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, I want you guys to stay tuned because towards the end of the podcast, we're going to give you some information on how you can get your app customized through BV Mobile Apps. So we got all the details and more in just a few moments. Stick around for that information towards the end of the podcast. But on today's show, we have another amazing guest. And uh, this DJ, this professional DJ, is hailing from Nashville, Tennessee. But she currently resides in the beautiful city of the ATL, that is Atlanta, Georgia. And she is known as the hybrid specialist. Uh, She works in the music industry as an educator, as an instructor, and a professional DJ. And she is also the owner and music director of WLAG Timeless Radio. So we're going to talk about all that and more. But on today's theme of BB Mobile Apps Podcast, we're going to talk about why it is important to offer DJ lessons to aspiring DJs and people who want to be professional DJs. And so now here on the BB Mobile Apps Podcast, I am so glad and honored to be joined by DJ Lyris. Hey, DJ Lyris, how's it going? It's going well. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on you guys' podcast, so thank you for having me. Yes, indeed, and and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak to us today, and I know you have a hectic schedule, especially with the profession that you're in and everything that you are doing in the music industry, Uh, and like I said just a few moments ago, we're going to educate our BV Mobile Apps podcast listeners on the importance of why it is important to have those DJ lessons in place for those that want to learn about the profession as well as the business. But I want to start off by talking about your rich history in the DJ game. Uh, I mentioned a few moments ago that you consider yourself as the hybrid specialist. Uh, You've been in the game for a great amount of time. You're a veteran DJ. Uh, You've been in the game uh, let's take it back to 2010 you linked up with several local djs in atlanta uh, to horn your skills in mixing blending and beat matching but where did the love for dj come from where did it all started um it it definitely started uh in the womb uh, my dad was a avid music collector um so he kept music playing um through through our household um since i could remember um, and it's just something that has always been uh, a a way of expressing myself um, and just learning through him and seeing how music used to light him up. You know, it, it immediately did the same for me in my household. So I started gravitating to music um, before I could actually, you know, speak. Um, but just um, growing up, watching and um watching videos and growing up listening to different music especially music of his time i just grew more and more um grew more and more of a love for it and just how it made me feel but also the people around me feel it was just this thing that i i saw that connected people um my whole life and i just wanted to be a part of that mm-hmm. Nine years old, that young, uh, even before then, like you said, uh, it started when you was in the womb. But you come from a household where it was always music uh, in the household. We, You know, vinyl before MP3s Mm -hmm. and before uh, music that we could listen to on our smartphones. You had vinyl laying around. And I can relate because my mother had vinyl laying around in her home Mm -hmm. as well, too. Uh, But what what were some of the earlier artists that you were influenced by? Well, it it first started with uh, Michael Jackson, of course. Um, I had my father's um, Jackson 5 albums that I used to listen to when I was a kid. And, of course, at that time, that was during the 
thriller, thriller year. So I just, I mean, I, I madly fell in love with Michael and just uh, the magic and the music um, that he created. But really, uh, between Motown um, artists, which was my dad's, you know, favorite, and as I started getting older, I gravitated a lot to uh, the Babyface, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis sound, Teddy Riley. That that really formed, those were my formative years, of discovering the music for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I gravitated to. Then um, introduction to hip-hop in the early, early 90s. And it just kind of expanded um, into pop, rock, uh, like the little grunge, um, Growing up in Nashville, I even had a touch of country. Um, I, I have a, I have a special love for oldies, a lot of doo wop in sixties. Um, so all of that pretty much um, started around that age. Like I just the access to the radio stations in Nashville and um, back then when they actually played videos <laughs> on uh, TV. I, I consume my days with music. So those those tend to be the focal points of of my growing up. And again, you know, growing up in the household with, you know, your black parents, you grew up with, you know, Anita Baker, Luther Vandross, Freddie Jackson, all those soul artists. So all of that, those are all my teachers, I would say. Um, but everybody knows Michael was my was my first love. Yeah. Yeah. I think most people's first love was, of course, Michael Jackson. If it wasn't Prince or if it wasn't Stevie Wonder or Marvin Gaye, it was definitely Michael Jackson. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But ironically, when people ask me who my favorite artist is, I say Stevie Wonder. Oh, okay. Yeah. I that took again, as you evolve and grow in your music, um, I think you just you see how it, it shakes you and moves you in when I look at Stevie's body of work and what it represents and the consistency and the love poured into it, there's just no artist to me that touched that. Michael was magnetic, but Stevie just, Stevie has a different place in my heart now. So that's why when people ask me, it started with Michael, but it's, it's Stevie. It's definitely Stevie Wonder. Stevie, one of the greats, one of the legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say he's the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know people will argue, but I'm like, man, Steve, that Stevie influenced Michael heavily, so you know people got to know that. So did Michael James Brown. So did James Brown. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael was a sponge. That's what made him so great. Right. Right. Now, I also mentioned, too, that you linked up with several local DJs, and we have so many DJs out of Atlanta. Uh, that have made a name for themselves over the years. And and who are some of those DJs that you had the opportunity of linking up with? The first two that I connected with was uh, DJ LV and DJ Genius. And they are, to this day, still my favorite uh, DJs. Um, again, they, they have such a love and passion for it, but also a patience. Um, and so when I moved here, I was really blessed to link up with those two guys. And then after that, I went into uh, Scratch Academy. They had a Scratch Academy in Atlanta, ran by Precise, and Precise was a really, really great um, influence and mentor um, at that school. So I would say that I really had some um, great guidance coming out. Moving from, uh, I lived in Charlotte, um, and once my father passed, I had moved to Atlanta and I, I was really blessed to, to link up with those guys. Those are some familiar names. And I'm glad that you had the opportunity of linking up with those type of DJs out of Atlanta. And I, I think they also helped you and they were very instrumental in you getting to where you need to be as a DJ. Uh, because fast forward oh, to God. now, yeah, fast forward to now, you are an educator and instructor in the music industry. You're the owner and music director of WLAG Timeless Radio. Yes, yes. So I've been truly blessed with a lot of different opportunities. Um, but overall, once I got into DJing and really learning more of the art, I realized how much um, there's 
there's so much more I can do. And, and being a music curator um, really kind of opened my eyes to being able to curate, curate people's experiences through music. So Music 2 is a label that uh, has, a, has housed um, over 100 different um, curators that uh, curate their own private um, list. And uh, we actually put new artists on. Uh, on our list if they fit into the into our genre. So my 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 um playlist is called Music to Warm the Soul. Um that's what really spurred the passion for me starting the radio station. I had dreams of doing that years, um, probably the last five years. Mm-hmm. And once I like once you write it down it becomes real. But the the, the idea was to again create a platform where people can connect with music and that's what i love to do just yeah. curate an experience so this is a nostalgia station but again this is where i'm really showing my curation skills and what i do djing again is you know creating that for certain events um but overall just being able to curate experiences in different um different uh situations is what i'm really really blessed to do right right fast forward to now you put together and orchestrated a class if you will a a dj class offering djs uh lessons Mm -hmm. for all ages any other dj services needed on how to perfect their craft uh, and so I want to reiterate for those who are just tuning in to the BV Mobile Apps podcast, we have our special guest, DJ Lyris, on the line with yours truly, Sean Garvey. We are talking about the importance of offering DJ lessons to those that want to perfect their craft or become a first time DJ in the efforts of becoming a professional DJ. Uh, so we definitely have an expert on the line and w- one of my questions for you, DJ Lyrus, says, uh, what does it take for a DJ to put together his own, own uh, class, if you will, to teach people how to DJ? What, what are the steps? I know there's levels to this. Well, the first step one is just your love for music. Um, I think once you have the love for music and what you want to do with that is have to connect people, get people to dance or, you know, whatever it is, that's the first thing, the love for that. Because that's going to push you through some of the learning curves of, of learning the DJ. Um, I would say that everybody is a DJ in some right if you got a playlist. If you put a playlist together, you've already started the process. Um, so what I teach is one, you finding what niche you want to really work in and then us breaking down the fundamentals of the organizing, which is key, organizing your music, um, understanding BPM, understanding counting, so you can understand how to blend. Um, to me, that was one of the, the things that those DJs, LB and Genius, really har- uh, focused on was learning to blend once you can blend you can do anything because you can hear the music so i really break down those fundamentals of organization um counting understanding how to count music and if you can count music which i think we all do when we bop our head we're counting we just don't know it um you can be a dj you really can it just it takes the discipline and the want to but again that's where the love comes in um, but then I also will teach you how to match, um, to blend and key and make sure that your music is actually flowing and it's not clashing. Um, and then I also, for advance, will teach just some basic scratches that can help you transition your music um, differently. So there's different um, levels within learning how to DJ, but I, again, I would say the main thing is just your love for it. And um, the love for your, the music and getting it out there to people and sharing that with people is is the beauty of it. And that's what's going to really push you through anything um, when it comes to DJing, I believe. 
I want to touch on some of those elements that you just mentioned in just a few moments, because that's very interesting. You bring those levels up. Um, but mm -hmm. as far as hosting or holding a DJ lessons class to teach people how to DJ in the uh, elements of it, like, it, do you have to have certain years in or a certain type of experience to be a DJ instructor? So, like, say, for example, a person like a DJ Premier or a DJ Kid Capri, they can easily teach hundreds of people uh, how to DJ. Uh, and they may have done that in the past before. Um, but for somebody who only has DJed for maybe like three to four years and they're good, they may not be on the same level as a DJ Kid Capri or a DJ Premier. Can they still offer lessons to people or is there a certain type of status that you have to have and a certain type of experience that you have to have in order to hold those kind of classes? Um, no, no. I mean, the, the experience level, so when we're speaking of your premieres and, you know, the, the kid capris, um, the thing is that's what people see. There's so many different um, types of DJs. Um, so the level doesn't matter as long as you get the fundamentals. Does that make sense? Like, right. you know, somebody can teach you how to do mic skills, but that doesn't that's not as important as being able to blend two songs that people can still keep grooving to. So I don't know. I don't think, you know, that there's this, this special requirement. It's again, the fact of how you want to get this music out to the people is, is the most important. Um, I hope I'm, I hope I'm answering yeah. you know, your question. Yeah. Um, but it's for everybody. You know, like I said, I believe everybody has some level of it. If you listen to music, if you put a playlist together and you go on a road trip and you be like, hey, I got to play this for y'all, you've already started that process. What I do is just break it down into figuring out exactly how you want to create this, um, this atmosphere and community for people through the music that you like. So it's really about okay, let's try this way and this way. But more than anything, the fundamentals of blending and counting is what I truly focus on. And I believe you, you can, if I, if you got that, you can do anything. Um, you can be the next kid Capri or the DJ premier. Uh, and I mean, no, no diss to those guys, but you know, there's, you got your jazzy jazz and you have some really D nice. You have some really great, DJs out here, but they all are different in ways, but they're all great. Mm -hmm. So it's just about you, me helping you find what that is for you. Right, right. And we have so many people that are listening to us on the BB Mobile's podcast. They listen to our podcast, and we had a number of DJs that have been on our podcast in the past. Uh, and some who listen in, they either are questioning about those type of classes or saying to themselves, Oh, well, I don't need to sign up for a class to learn how to DJ. I can just watch somebody DJ and I pick it up right then and there, or they can just go on YouTube and simply watch yeah. those videos, uh, uh, those tutorial videos on how to DJ, how to mix, how to blend. Uh, but it's nothing like having that, face-to-face -face personal experience between you as the student and the DJ as the teacher is nothing like it. W would you agree? Yes, I agree. The hands-on experience is the best because one, you're, we're all forever students in whatever field we're in. So I'm still a student and I do, do YouTube. I've done um, Beat Junkies um, courses. I, I've done them all. But the hands-on was, it was critical for my learning because that those DJs shared with me, but they also showed me. They were there, and they actually taught me through that process. The YouTube video can't do that. But I will say that all of those things are important, but the hands-on, having somebody, having a mentor, having somebody um, guide you and someone you can ask questions and really 
give you more of a hands-on is is very important. I mean, I, I hope, you know, I see how things are moving with Zoom, but I hope we don't get too far away from that because mm-hmm. that interaction is really, really key. Um, just the connecting, connecting to a, um, to a student and um, invested in what they are learning. Um, again, when I'm trying to show you how to uh, blend and transition, I want to be there to be, to, to, to walk you like through that. And again, I can do it through Zoom, which is not a problem, but um, again, having somebody there to give you some feedback, just that's, that's key in any learning environment. Okay. That definitely makes sense. Uh, and, and like I said, it's nothing like that face-to-face experience to have to really be in the classroom or do it by way of virtual since everybody is doing it nowadays, uh, getting those type of classes via Zoom or via uh, Google Hangouts or whatever services that they're using to really get that personal connection uh, and that personal learning to perfect your craft and, and to hone your skills as a professional DJ. So let's talk about day one. Day one of the class you introduce yourself as DJ Lyris, a.k.a. the hybrid specialist, to your students. What takes place during day one of the class? On well, day one, um, everyone shares why, why they want to do this and what led them here. So I can at least understand the background and, and the intent through it. Um, but the fir- the first day, we're going to get familiar with our equipment. We're going to get familiar with uh, our program, um, which will be Serato, and we'll get uh, uh, familiar with the actual controller or turntables that we're um, working with. And basically talking through a little bit of the history um, of of the involvement from the software and the turntables and the controller, but then also how to hook up things. Um, and that's a, that's a big part of learning is, and being self-sufficient as a DJ is understanding your equipment, understanding the software that you're using, um, how it can best serve you as a DJ. Um, and then also how to hook it up and understanding your cords and your wires. So um, I really like to focus on those key elements that are just going to make you an overall good DJ um, and understanding that. Now, that's, of course, at a beginner level, level, but depending on what level a person is coming in, we're going to just tackle understanding what you have first and how that can help you in this process. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine that there are going to be note taking for this type of class during day one. Uh, like you said, how to hook up your equipment, um, what to do when you come across a issue or how to troubleshoot your piece of equipment. If something goes wrong, we had those instances happen before where something goes wrong or, uh, something so simple may come off as hard to, fix or repair when it comes to knowing your equipment but you you break all that down during day one Mm -hmm. yes and and each time we start class we'll go over that reiterating that so you have to hook up your equipment every time we start class and i do that because that's how i was taught and because that repetition is really key in understanding your cords and how to hook up things so yes I will reiterate that because the most important thing you can do as a DJ is actually know your equipment and software because something goes wrong or you don't understand something. You need to know what's happening with it and just how it works. I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Now, what about if someone doesn't have his or her own equipment yet and they still attend class on day one, what do you recommend for those who um, don't have their equipment yet, but they still want to come in for day one of that training? Oh, well, that's, you know, I will still be demonstrating on on mine, and I would actually have one. 
um, available. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is just for them to um, observe and and pay attention because either way, whatever I'm going to be showing them will be pretty universal as far as uh, any controller or or turntable they're using. Um, We also will go more into understanding what you're doing so again some of the things won't require just hands-on equipment but just understanding what overall you'll be doing as a dj as far as uh taking two songs and blending into the other understanding how to set cue points so again that's a software thing so they a lot of uh, students won't even have anything but uh, i would definitely have a list of uh recommended um equipment to have for them but they will get to at least use what i have so they can at least get some type of hands on mm-hmm. okay now let's go into day two of the training day two we go from introducing ourselves talking about why it is that we want to uh get into this profession and then putting together and getting acquainted with their equipment so let's go from day one to day two. What takes place during training on oh. day two? Now, now, day two will be um, creating their playlist or in the um, in the software we call them crates. And I'll have each student at least put um, 10 songs that they would like to uh, do. And I always let them choose um do a genre so I might say let's do a 90s like crate and pick songs and then I would demonstrate um blending two songs but what I will be focusing on is how to count bars so the second class will be selecting music and then understanding counting so we would take just these two songs and I would show them how you count and understand song structure and then we will use the, the example of those two songs to blend and then have the students take songs out of their list and, and practice that, reiterate the counting. The counting is really, to me, the most important part because once you find, find the music that you want, you need to understand how to count the music in it. And then breaking down, like I said, the second class is, for people to understand different song structures and how uh, how to count in music so you can know when to bring in a song. So that would be day two. And that actually lasts about three lessons because that's something that, again, they're working with a playlist, so they're going to have to work through other songs. And that's when I start introducing um, the uh, music theory and understanding key the software does read key for you, so you can actually um, um, learn through that. So we're incorporating things that the software does, again, to help you with those fundamentals, fundamentals which is um, key matching is, and counting. Mm-hmm. So those are the lessons. And, again, we're still going to be going over hooking up and understanding your equipment each class because I believe in reiterating, right. reinforcing lessons. Right. Repetition. right. I can think of two songs off the top of my head um, that I could see being a good blend from transitioning from one record to the next. One would be Hollywood Swinging from um, Sly. Is it Sly and the Family Stone? Uh huh. Yeah, what Sly- was the title? Uh, what did you say? Hollywood Swinging. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, transitioning from that to um, like a Tina Marie, um, like a Tina Marie uh, Square Biz, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I could see that being a, a good blend to mix or to transition from one song to the next. But, you know, how would you how would a person know to go from one record to the next like how would they know what records or what songs to pick out from their crate uh to put up against each other and go from one record to the next how could they pick that out well that's actually a good question i think how 
think you said Hollywood Swing. That's uh, cool in the game. Cool. Yeah, cool in the game. Thank you. I was about to say cool in the game, but yeah. Sometimes I get cool in the game and slide in the family stone mixed up. That's all good. Um, well, you first start off again. You pick dance records. You pick um, and you pick the genre that's um, got that seventies, eighties funk. So. For me, the way I break out my music, um, and this is why the crate, I say it's called crate organization, is you want to break out the music that makes sense to you. This is what's really key about each individual person, each individual DJ. You already have in mind what you want. So for me, I would just guide, okay, you want, do you feel like you want to do a funk set or, you know, more of the 70s, 80s? So we will pick other songs that have those type of arrangements, uh, horns, um, the certain guitar licks and rhythms. That's that's how you know where you want to go. Music is broken down by tempo, so and we call those BPM. So we will look at the music. Like I said, we pick ten songs in pro- possibly this genre that you pick. And we'll look at the BPMs and the tempos, and we want to get the songs with the most familiar tempos together, okay? So we can kind of get a flow for the dance floor. You can take different tempos, that's fine, if it has the same, I say the same key, because that's, that's very important. If it's in the same key, it can be different tempos. But as a DJ, it's your job to hear the music, fill it out, and get it together so when i'm teaching i'm going to teach you by bpm first i'm going because i want to teach you how to count so we will look at tina marie and let's say tina marie's square biz is probably i'm thinking somewhere about one 109 110 or something Hollywood swing might be um probably around 90s or closer to that um and you would just you would adjust the BPMs um, on your equipment mm. to get those in line, and then that's how you blend the two. But we would actually be adding more songs that you might find that might blend better together before you blend those two, and that's the fun part of it. Um, it's like a puzzle. We find the songs that we like and we think, ooh, this would be good for dance floor, and we put those together, and we find the flow. And again, these are things that I were taught. I was, I got songs that I like, and I, at one moment, I thought I wanted to mix these two together. But once I started counting and looking at the BPM and the key, I was like, no, I'll switch it up. So that's what I teach you. I, I'm leading you into how to feel the music for yourself. Mm. Um, and I think that's the most important thing when you're selecting the music as a DJ. You're reading the crowd, but you there's an internal thing in you. You call it your soul that's already connecting to the music and you already know what, oh, I think this is so good. Because honestly, those were two good picks. Uh, yeah. Marie and, and the guy. <laughs> so yeah, those are, that's how, that's how I would do that. And it's for each person to find that genre, that thing that they like. Because we got to start with what you like first when we're learning. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's yeah. what I would do for that situation. You hit something home a few moments ago, and that was BPM. We hear it all the time from artists and from DJs talk about BPMs, BPMs. But for those that do not know, what is a BPM and what does BPM stand for? Uh, well, it's, it's beats per minute. Um, so basically it's the uh, how many beats are you get in a minute, it's the speed of the track. Um Either way, no matter the speed of the track, the count is always the same. It's just, uh, you know, the BPM helps you understand tempo of a song. So, you know, a track that's at 75 beats per minute is vastly different than a track that's at 100 beats per minute. And that's, that, that's just so people can understand rhythm and tempo. Um, so... To, to keep it simple, it's just the speed of the track, pretty much. It's either, you know, very slow moving, kind of a nice little groove, a slow bop, or you find yourself tapping your foot a little faster. Gotcha. That's, that's a higher 
uh, tempo, higher BPM. I've heard DJs blend and some I would say threw me off because I would hear a DJ play a fast record and then come out of that fast record and go into a slow record. Or it could be a record mm-hmm. where it's old school, like late 70s, early 80s. And for some reason, it goes from that era to a early 2000 or a mid 2000 track. And it just throws the whole thing off. And you're just like, what in the world? <laughs> like, uh, is, is that right. a clap? Is that a classic mistake that happens during the course of DJs getting those type of lessons from you? Um, so this is the thing. What you just described can be done and not throw you off, but that's the key to transition. And then there's a whole, there's a whole class, the class is on transitions. So, I've I've been in those situations as well. And it's a case where we use to say this, nothing cannot be mixed together, okay? It's just all about how you transition your crowd and the people to it. So you're either going to learn to use transition techniques, which, you know, we use FX, we use um, different filters, um, you can do all types of manipulation with what we call beat jumping and looping. There's all types of things that can be used to transition from a slow track to a fast track or fast track to a slow track, but you need to have, know how to use those effectively. And that's one of the key um, ingredients in the course um, to take you to, a, to an intermediate or advanced level is to understand transitioning. Um, a lot of DJs do it through mic work. You hear it all the time. They are introducing you. They're letting you know what's coming up. They're 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 prepping you that we're about to we're about to make this turn. And so therefore, it's not too drastic. It's not too oh my god. Mm-hmm. That's still a transition technique. Right. So um, those DJs um, probably just wasn't aware or knew. But if they paid attention to the crowd, they knew they threw the crowd off for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People tend to look up. But that is that is something that, again, I don't ever like to put anybody in a box of how you make your music, but you have to understand that you're curating. So you need, if you're going to do something that's going to throw the, the groove to a different groove, you need to allow your crowd and your listeners to know that. Um, mm-hmm. and so transitioning is key on that one. Transitioning is key. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. For those who are just tuning in, we are talking to DJ Lyris, aka the hybrid specialist. And we're talking about the importance of offering DJ lessons to people who want to learn how to DJ. We broke down day one. We talked about day two. Now let's jump into day three. And I think day three gets a little bit intense compared to day one and day two as we get ready to pick up on the speed of how to master your craft, how to master your skill. What takes place in day three? Well, day three, we're still in, in uh, reiterating everything from the last two days. But again, the students are now showing me where they're where they're at as far as their music selection and 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 blending and then that's when we're going to start touching on transitioning but we're still focusing on making sure that they got the counting and, and everything so this might still be this might be class uh five or six before we really uh turn the corner um into the transitioning because uh again the counting and understanding how to blend is important but the transitioning um, your music can only come once you've actually decided what songs you're going to put together and understanding the counting, understanding the organization. Mm-hmm. Also, in day three, we were probably setting what I call cue points, um, understanding where in parts of your songs that you can transition and um, bring in another song. So, 
uh, a lot of the work that the students will be doing is understanding their music. So they will be having homework or I would, it is homework, but at the end of the day, it's taking these things that we're learning and making sure that they can do it on their own for the next class. So the first, I would say, several lessons is just focusing on putting your music together and understanding how to 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 uh, market, blend it, and then we start talking about transitioning and different ways to transition through Serato. There's a whole course on all the different things and ways we can transition using the software and the controller. And so those, I kind of start incorporating those once the students start building the list and understanding how they want to mm-hmm. flow because we want to start incorporating these um, aspects mm-hmm. in it. Yeah. I want to put a bookmark in that uh, before we go into day four and day five, uh, because once again, the class is offered to those that have to have a passion for this and want to do this, but it's open for all ages as well. And uh, what is the age requirement, uh, may I ask, uh, for signing up to the DJ lessons? You say what's the age requirement? Yeah, what is the age requirement? It says all ages. But there has to be some type of age requirement, though. Like, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The, we start. I, I I start right around seven. I'll get that low um, if they're interested. But um, seven is 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 where I will uh, start. Okay. And of course, there's no, you know, I don't have, I don't have a ceiling on on the age. But uh, tension span, I know, is really hard. <laughs> For the little ones, so that's what I would. Um, that's where I would start, mm-hmm. and then I would hope that the parent would be, you know, want to be part of the class as well, which would be good to kind of reiterate with the kids. But yeah. I haven't had any kids yet. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get some, some young ones in though. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, because uh, I'm already seeing. A lot of kids, whether they are six, seven, eight, or nine, already starting DJing, and and they are doing a pretty good job at doing that kind of craft. Uh, so they're already staying ahead of the game. Uh, as a young DJ up and coming, um, because I just love seeing that. I just love seeing the fact that you can start out so young. But it's never too late because you can also start DJing uh, much older, uh, you know, once you have that passion or once you have that mindset ready to DJ. Let's take the bookmark out and go into day four as well as day five of the course. Uh, Can you explain what takes place during those two days, day four and day five? Um, again, day, day four, um, just reiterating everything we've learned with um, beat matching, blending, um, and seeing where the students are with the transition. Um, and then we will, I will introduce what we call the baby scratch and just teaching them just basic scratches that will help when you're taking one song into another how to count and scratch it in if you if you want to. Now, a lot of people are not big on scratching, um, and I'm not an advanced scratcher, but I do believe in just the baby scratch. And if we have time, if, if I have any students as advanced, well, I'll show them the chirp. Um, but these are just good scratches to use when transitioning into another song. So um, the focus is always on counting whatever song choice, understanding the, the blending and key, um, key matching and then transitioning. So once a student is introduced to all the different techniques mm-hmm. of transitioning, then we get to take it to the, to the scratches. Actually, where, where are we at now in the class where by that time you picked up everything that you needed to know about BPM, about blending, a little bit of scratching, 
uh, knowing your equipment, where do we go now in the course to where now you presenting yourself as a person who already got it together and you ready to showcase to the class what you have been taught so far? Okay. So the, the, the ending of the class would be incorporating all those. So I would actually have each student give me a 10 minute set where they're incorporating all of these elements. Um, and that means from the beginning, you setting up your, the setting up the equipment and actually blending these songs for 10 minutes, um, using these techniques and, once you're able to do that, you can take any set of songs to mix. What you do from here is just build on that. So if I give you an assignment to do that, then you have to keep challenging yourself and all these techniques that have been shown to you on different sets, and you keep adding and adding and adding. So what I would do is if you can if you end the class with this and you've you know completed and if you enjoyed it continue to build sets like this i would encourage people to continue to work the muscle you know i <clears throat> i haven't set up uh courses outside of the fundamental yet but i will always be here to help reiterate those techniques if needed but it's really up to that individual after that to keep building and working that muscle. Um, that's what I did. Once I had put a set together, I just kept putting sets together, and I keep putting sets together. And I'm finding different ways of how to transition one song to another, um, blending. One aspect that I would really, really share with the class is learning how to take uh, instrumental and a cappella together mm. and um, blending those. Those are some good practice techniques to kind of build on those fundamentals because again it's going to come down to the counting the music um uh, gritting your music and actually understanding how to uh how to put stuff together right right do you do you also teach your class how to speak and play your records at the same time having those additional skills once you got everything down pack do you also teach that no my my work is not included in in this uh fundamental course um but again it's, it's something that i i i share what i know and what i've learned in the industry um in the course but the i my work has to do with a person's level of comfort but um the best the best advice i was given if a person does want to learn my work is to actually perform in your living room with the mic of talking. Um, what I always will tell people is if you're talking, um, learn to drop down the, the, the levels. But I don't actually teach that course. I teach that um, aspect in the course um, of mic work. So. Right, gotcha. What do you want people to take away from your class, even if they do it for a minute and they be like, well, you know what? This is going to be just more of a hobby for me. This is not going to be something I would turn into a career, but this would be just something more of a hobby or, you know, for those that take it seriously and turn it into a career and monetize it and be that professional DJ to where they uh, can create businesses from network with people and things of that sort but most importantly for those that come to your class sign up for it and, and take the classes what do you want people to take away from it um the main thing is uh, to just keep learning um the biggest take takeaway is no matter what you're going to use this for it's a skill um and if you're a music lover and you just love to play music, you, you literally can do this for yourself. But the, the takeaway is learning something um, and a skill that you can actually go out in the world and, and I say heal, because um, music does heal. So no matter what, it is a tool that can be used to help others as well as yourself. 
because being able to play music and um, curate a, uh, a an experience, I think is completely undervalued. But I think during these times, people are really understanding the importance of it. So that's one of the biggest takeaways I would say that you would have is you know you learn you learn a skill that can help heal this world a little bit. Mm, very paramount. Very important. Uh, now, before we talk a little bit about WLAG, Timeless Radio, and other things that you're currently working on, uh, what is the process for people joining your class? Do they have to register online? Uh, is there an admission cost to joining your class? What What is the process? Um, they can just visit the, my website, um, DJ Lyris. Um, dot com I uh, have music lessons and you can actually just contact me through there um, you can also find me on uh, djlessons.com I'm also an instructor out there um, in the Atlanta area so you know you can request me through those two means as far as lessons are concerned and again I have a, a five unit course but I will um, modify packages to whatever learning needs a, a DJ wants. I, I have helped, I recently helped a DJ just do some crate organization, which I didn't mind. So um, I, I provide a lot of different services. Just, you know, um, contact me and we can always discuss. Awesome. Great. Great. Well, we got some people that are waiting to sign up for your classes. So we're definitely looking forward awesome. to that. Now, before we let you go, because we only have a few minutes left here in the BV Mobile Apps podcast, and you have given some great information so far. Let's talk about WLAG Timeless Radio. What does it consist of? Oh, uh, well, WLAG Timeless Radio is my baby. It's something um, that I started um, in remembrance of my father. Um, but it stands for uh, nostalgic music. It is a place where music that was created that makes you feel good, takes you back to a certain time. So it's really genre-based, um, mainly of the uh, 70s and 80s and 90s, um, sprinkle of 2000s, and I, I do have some um, 60s, 50s and 60s music blocks. But the point is for it to be a, a memory lane type station. So you hear all the music I call it nostalgic music um, of our time. I'm a Aiden baby, and I grew up during a time, of course, where I was surrounded by music um, um, from prior decades. And I just wanted to create a space that people could go to that might that's a little bit warmer than some of the music that is out right now that gives you this sense of uh, warmth and calmness. And um, I found that music from that from these eras did that, and I I have the pleasure of curating and putting um, playlists and um, 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 requests for people as far as those those um, songs. So um, it's my baby, and you know it's growing, it's doing really well, and I um, I just I just want more people to know about it. All right. And definitely you have an app, BV Mobile Apps. Yeah. Shouts to them. Uh, people can listen to yeah. it 24 7, can listen to WLAG, Timeless Radio, to hear all of the great hits. And how can people get the app? Well, um, again, thanks again to you guys. You, you can get the app from um, the Apple Store or Google Play. Um, you also can listen to the app through the, the actual website, um, WLAG Timeless Radio. So there's multiple ways, but I really, really highly recommend people get the app. Um, it's just easier, accessible, um, faster load time. Um, but then you also have things that you can learn about me. Um, the app actually houses my mixes that I've done over the years. Um, so it's just a great place um, to really have that music on you 24 um, seven. I find it very convenient at nighttime when I'm trying to um, wind down and all I have to do is just pull up my app and play. So nice. That's where you can find it. Nice. Well, DJ Lyris, 
Thank you so much for being our guest today on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. And how can people link up with you and follow you on social media? Um, you can find me by my tag, DJ Lyris, um, L-Y-R-I-S, um, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can also uh, check out my website, please, DJLyris.com. Um, and as far as the radio station, WLAG Timeless Radio, um, please follow that on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we have great activity. We have a lot of the artists come in and uh, comment and, um, you know, drop in to say hello. So it's really been uh, a great uh, platform for people to actually share these memories that this music does um, affects them and how and how it makes them feel. So right. I urge uh, anyone listening to just go out there and, and check us out. Right. All right. Well, DJ Lyris, once again, thank you so much on talking about the importance of offering DJ lessons to people who want to learn how to DJ. And we really appreciate you for calling in. Much success to you and keep doing your thing, right? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me again. You're welcome. Then, ladies and gentlemen, that was DJ Lyris. And we are so appreciative of having her on today's broadcast of the BB Mobile Apps podcast. And she is also the hybrid specialist. So make sure you follow her and sign up to be a student in one of her classes. So that way you can get to the next level as a DJ. This has been the BB Mobile Apps podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. Follow us at BB Mobile Apps. And don't forget to go to bvmobileapps.com to learn more on how you can get your app customized through BV Mobile Apps. That's bvmobileapps.com. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Sean Garvey ATL, and on Facebook at Sean Garvey. Once again, this has been the BV Mobile Apps Podcast, and I look forward to hearing from you soon once again. Take care. It's a new year. It's a new day. We're starting it over. Starting the day. Thank you for listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. For more information about BV Mobile Apps, visit the website, bvmobileapps.com. Don't forget to follow BV Mobile Apps on social media at BV Mobile Apps. Tune in again next time on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast.